What's up guys, Dr. Shepard here, and I am going to be telling you the honest truth today about how much a doctor makes during their career. So we're talking med school, residency, fellowship, attending life after you're done with all your training. How much do doctors actually make? My specialty is psychiatry, so I'm gonna talk specifically about my experience. And another caveat is that I'm located in the United States, so this really only applies to doctors practicing in the US. I have no idea what they make elsewhere, but I'm sure there's probably some major differences given that the structure of how we pay for medical school in the US is very different from other countries. So let's get right to it. So I'm gonna gloss over college because obviously a lot of people go to college, definitely not just doctors, but as you guys know, it does require a four-year college degree to get accepted to medical school. And there are certain prerequisites that you have to do, things like biology, general chemistry, organic chemistry, physics, calculus, all that good stuff. If you didn't do those as part of your degree for whatever reason, that would be an extra cost that you would need to take on. Then of course there are the dreaded entrance exams for med school, the MCAT, which can be pretty expensive considering that most people purchase review courses in order to prepare for the MCAT. So as you can imagine, this is already putting potential future doctors who are coming from less than economically advantaged home situations at a serious disadvantage. So I think there's a lot of work to be done in that realm, but that's a whole other video. All right, so you've made it. You have finished your prereqs, you've done really well in your MCAT, and you're accepted to med school. Hooray! So what do you get paid? Mm, nothing. So you get nothing, you lose. Good day, sir. Sorry, it's a trick question. So not only do you make nothing during medical school, you actually pay for medical school. And it's pretty darn expensive. So most future doctors end up taking out pretty substantial loans in order to pay for medical school. The amount of money that you're gonna pay to go to med school is gonna vary pretty significantly based on where you actually end up going. So that ends up being something that is a pretty significant factor in choosing where you wanna to go to med school. If you're lucky enough to have the choice, many people will consider the cost of the medical schools they're accepted to as part of their decision making. One of the biggest differences in cost for medical school is going to be whether you're going to a state school and you're an in-state applicant versus whether you are going to a private medical school or whether you're going as an out-of-state applicant. So just like college, being an out-of-state applicant or going to a private college is gonna be a lot more expensive than your in-state school. Same for medical school. So I looked up some numbers from the National Center for Education Statistics and I found the average amount of medical school debt for graduates in 2016. So this is one year after I graduated med school. So back in 2016, which was the most recent date I could find, the average medical school graduate had $250,000 in debt, which is about what I had. They estimated that about $232,000 dollars of this was due to medical school alone. So not counting things like college loans or post back programs or any of the other stuff that I mentioned earlier. So like I said, going to your in-state school is gonna make a pretty big difference. And I was lucky enough to get accepted to my in-state school and ended up choosing to go there in large part, honestly, because of the amount of money that I was gonna be saving. And I actually would really, really recommend considering that if you have the option. You can just look up board scores and where people got accepted for residencies if you're really concerned about whether your state school is good. But for the most part, these schools are really good. And you really don't have to go after a big name school to be able to get a really great medical education and a really coveted residency spot. So again, look at your USMLE board pass rates for each school to make sure that there's no funny business and look at where recent graduates have matched for residency. But in general, going with the cheaper option, not a bad idea. So as I said, I finished med school with about $250,000 in debt and it was because I took out the full amount of loans that I was eligible to take. Some people do not do that. I didn't have any other sorts of financial support at the time, so I did end up taking out the full amount, but yeah. 
So that's not just tuition, thankfully. That includes things like money that you can put towards your room and board, towards your food expenses, whatever other expenses that you might have during medical school. Um, and this is because they are assuming that you're not gonna be able to work during med school and you really can't. So the first two years, there is typically a summer break during which you can work if you find something that you can just do for the summer. Um, so like for example, I was able to do a tutoring program for med students that were just beginning their first year and I got a stipend for doing that. But outside of that first summer, there really isn't enough time to be able to do well in medical school and also hold a job that is going to provide you with a decent amount of money. Some med schools actually even expressly prohibit you from working during medical school because it really is such a full-time job. They want your full attention and your full focus on medical school because they don't wanna risk having people dropping out because their focus is elsewhere. And I know the rationale for some schools is that, well, if you are studying and finish all your clinical work, well, then you should be doing research or volunteer projects or whatever it might be. So anyways, all of that to say that working during med school is really discouraged and honestly would be really hard to do aside from that first summer. All right, so you did it. You paid a lot of money, you studied really hard, you spent a lot of hours in the hospital. Now you are a full-fledged doctor and you're off to residency. So you matched at your dream residency spot or maybe not your dream residency spot, but it's still fine. And you are off to make that big doctor money. Not so fast. So you do make money in residency, that is the good news. So as a resident, you're gonna make probably between 55 and $65,000 a year. So that's really not a bad salary, especially considering the fact that you were probably paying at least that much to go to med school. So it's kind of nice to start earning an actual paycheck. Residency programs all pay about the same. Any sort of difference that you find in a resident salary is mostly gonna depend on where you're working. So for example, I worked on the East Coast at Johns Hopkins Hospital in Baltimore, which is a pretty affordable city and my friend was working at UCSF over in California. So she had more of a housing allowance. She got paid a little bit more to make up for some of that difference in the cost of living. So slight variation in resident salary based on where you are actually training, but there's really no difference based on what you are doing as a resident. So she was a pediatrics resident, I was a psychiatry resident, we made about the same amount of money except for that cost of living. Likewise, a general surgery resident is gonna make about the same amount as an internal medicine resident who is gonna make about the same amount as an ophthalmology resident. So there's really no difference in specialties when you are still in training. So like I said, 55 to 65 grand a year is really not bad. If you break down that salary and look at it as an hourly rate, it can get a little bit depressing. Um, so most of the time when you are in residency, you are working right up to 80 hours a week. Sometimes on lighter rotations, you might work 40 hours a week, but for the most part, you're between 60 and 80 hours a week. So as you can imagine, working 80 hours a week at a salary of 55, to $65,000 a year is gonna net you between 20 and 30 bucks an hour. So again, not terrible, but you are working really, really hard and earning every penny of it. And residency for doctors in the United States is going to last at least three years and sometimes up to five, maybe even seven years. You can even train beyond that, and we're gonna talk about that a little bit in a moment, but throughout those years of training as a resident, you do get slight increases in your salary, mostly due to changes in inflation and cost of living. But residents do make slightly more for each year that they're in residency. All right, so then if you finish residency, what you can do is go on to do a fellowship. And not everyone does this. I didn't do a fellowship, but some people do. A fellowship is just getting additional training to specialize even further after you are done with your residency. So for example, you can do your residency in internal medicine and then do a fellowship in hematology oncology if you wanna be a cancer doctor, for example. Likewise, in psychiatry, you can do your general psychiatry residency, which I did, um, and then I decided to stop after that because I enjoyed 
kind of doing a little bit of everything, but you can also choose to then specialize. So for example, I have a lot of friends that have done child and adolescent psychiatry fellowships. So they're specialists in treating children's psychiatric disorders. And there's lots of other cool ones. If you guys are interested in learning more about the different specialty areas that you can go into for psychiatry, let me know, happy to talk about it. So in fellowship, you are gonna make a little bit more than you are in residency. You are working generally fewer hours. So you're more along the lines of 40 to 60 hours rather than 60 to 80 hours every week. And your pay is gonna increase usually to about 70 grand a year. So again, not making that huge doctor money, but certainly still enough to get by while you're in your training. Some people then go on to do additional fellowships and for each year in fellowship, again, you might make a little bit more money, but not much. So people often ask me during residency and fellowship, what are you doing with all of the debt that you accrued in medical school? You can defer your loans while you're in training and actually push off paying them. But most financial advisors that I talk to tell you not to do that. And it makes sense. You wanna try and at least pay some of the interest on your loans if you can while you're in residency and fellowship. Alas, it did not go all that well for me. So I did pay the minimum requirement while I was in residency and fellowship, but that wasn't enough to make up for the interest that was accruing. So I entered residency with about $250,000 in debt and then finished residency four years later with about $280,000 in debt. Yikes. So imagine if I hadn't been paying on that at all, which is totally an option. Anyways, it's wild. So you're done with residency, you're done with fellowship, now you're an attending. Aww. So yeah, you got a lot of debt, but now you're gonna be making the actual doctor money. So a, being an attending means that you have finished all of your training and you are now an independent medical doctor. You are doing your own thing, living the dream. So the amount you get paid as an attending is gonna vary greatly primarily based on your specialty, but also things like the location where you're working. So for example, if you are working in an academic institution, you're probably gonna be paid less than someone who's working in private practice. And of course, if you choose to work with an underserved population, you're probably going to be knowingly taking a pay cut compared to a physician who's working for a wealthier population. It also matters where you work again. So if you are a West Coast doc, you're probably gonna be making a lot more in those major metropolitan areas than us East Coast docs. And outside of the cities, you can actually get paid a ton to go into rural areas or underserved areas where you might be the only doctor around. You're probably gonna be working your butt off, but you can definitely get paid quite a bit. Unfortunately, there is also still a lot of discrimination in medicine. So women in medicine, black and brown folks in medicine, people who may be gender non-conforming in medicine, they all tend to unfortunately make less money. Hopefully this is something that's gonna change with the increasing numbers of each of those groups entering into medical school and continuing with their training. But for now, the pay gap still exists. So in general, primary care doctors, like doctors who practice general internal medicine, family medicine, pediatrics, sometimes psychiatrists are considered general practitioners, sometimes not, but they are gonna be making less than people who specialize in general. Procedures are another big thing that plays into how much each specialty is going to make. So specialties that do fewer procedures are generally going to make less money than specialties that do more procedures because procedures in particular, for some reason, are reimbursed better by insurance companies. So for example, in psychiatry, there are very few opportunities for us to do procedures, except for very specialized clinics. So we generally are going to be making less than, for example, a plastic surgeon who is going to spend most of their time doing procedures. So if you're interested in actually looking at the breakdown of how much each specialty makes each year, Medscape comes out with a report every year that details compensation by specialty, gender, location, all sorts of other things. And it can be really interesting to go through and look at it. They also break down a lot of other factors aside from salary. So things like physician's life satisfaction 
satisfaction levels by specialty or their self-reported rates of burnout. So for the 2020 annual compensation report, Medscape estimated that primary care physicians on average make $243,000 a year and specialists on average make about $346,000 a year. So as you can see, it's a pretty significant difference there, about a hundred grand difference for the average. So then they go on to break down compensation by each specialty in 2020 with orthopedic surgery leading the herd at $511,000 per year. Plastic surgery is close behind at $479,000 a year. So then otolaryngologists or ENT surgeons at about $455,000 a year, followed by cardiologists at $438,000 a year. And then as you continue going down the list, you'll see that the specialties that earn a little bit less, like I said, tend to be those in primary care or those where you can't really do a lot of procedures. So at the very bottom of the chart is psychiatry, me, at $268,000 a year, um, which is significantly above my current salary, which I'll get to in a second. Then you have rheumatology at $262,000 a year, internal medicine at $251,000 a year, endocrinology at $236,000 a year, family medicine at $234,000 a year, and public health and preventative medicine doctors at $232,000 a year. So huge range, all the way from $232,000 a year to $511,000 a year, and everything in between. But like I said, even within specialties, there's significant variability. So the average for psychiatry that I just mentioned is $268,000 a year. I actually make about $200,000 a year. So I'm making significantly less than some of my colleagues are. And a lot of that, again, is where you choose to practice. So I live in an area where the cost of living is fairly low and I chose to work in a nonprofit practice. So I knew that I'd be taking a little bit of a pay cut in doing that. I'm also fairly early on in my career. So I do expect that as time goes on, I can make a little bit more. That's not to say I won't change directions in the future. I think there's so many things that you can do in medicine that it's really hard to just limit yourself to one thing forever. So I may do something like start up my own business or try private practice world for a while or maybe head back to academics. That's a really wonderful thing is that you are really not limited to what you choose starting out. So all of this to say, yes, you can potentially make a lot of money as a physician. Some specialties can make bank, but you also get into a lot of debt as a physician. So at my job where I'm making $200,000 a year, I am 32 years old and I still have this $280,000 in debt that I'm trying to pay down. So it really can kind of limit your ability to buy a house, start a family, that sort of thing, depending on your comfort level. I've honestly kind of accepted that it's gonna take me a little while to pay this debt down, but it can be done. And many of us try our best to live below our means, especially as we first start out as attending doctors so that we can pay down some of those debts. There are other ways to pay for your medical school debt that I didn't really talk about much, so for example, if you commit to going into the military after med school for a certain amount of time, they will pay for your schooling. There are also programs where you can commit to working in an underserved area in a certain job after medical school and the government will pay for your medical school. You can do an MD PhD program. If you are selected to do that, then typically your tuition is covered in full. And there's something now called the Public Service Loan Forgiveness Program, where if you make payments on your loans for 10 years, you can have the remaining debt wiped out after 10 years. However, this is a program that's still relatively new and very few people have actually received the student loan forgiveness. An article last year from Forbes that I'll link below said that about 0.5% of applicants actually receive the funds that they applied for. So I'm not counting on it. So yes, there are ways to reduce or even eliminate the amount of debt that you accrue in medical school. And ultimately, like I said, even the lower paying specialties are making a decent amount of money. You'll pay off the debt eventually. But that being said, I think there's sometimes a belief that doctors are super rich and they make a ton of money and they do make a lot of money, but Considering the amount of debt that we go into in order to eventually make that money, I really think that you should not go into medicine if you just want to make money. I think there are way smarter ways to make money. 
There are so many jobs where you don't have to go into even a fraction of the debt in order to make even more than I make now. So I always counsel people to be really careful and know that if you're going into medicine, it should not be for the money, it should be in spite of the money. It has to be something you're really passionate about, you really enjoy, and you're willing to dedicate many years of your life and a whole lot of money to being able to pursue the career that you love. And if medicine is all you wanna do, then maybe it's worth it. But if you're just going after the money, I think you're gonna be really disappointed. So let me know what you guys think. Were you surprised to hear about how much debt doctors have and how much they make? Or was this right on par with what you thought? Is there anything else that you wanna learn about medical school, psychiatry, or just being a doctor in general? I also love talking about mental health and general wellness tips, so let me know if you have questions about that too. And if you're interested in potentially working with me, head over to my website, www.drmelissashepard.com and check out the resources that I have available there. All right guys, if you haven't already, hit like, hit the subscribe button, push the notifications bell so you know every time I post a new video and I will see you guys next time.